My name is Raphael Jenkins. I go by Ralphie Boy most of the time. Why did I start writing poetry? Um, I don't know. Everybody always says it's a great way to express oneself, but honestly, I fell in love through reading it and thinking that it was a, an easy thing to do. If that makes any sense at all, probably makes no sense. But I, I assumed it was like, this is e easily replicable. So yeah, I'm gonna do that. I could be like nice with the pen or whatever. It takes nothing. And I was wrong for years, uh, but I had a good time like the whole time. So yeah. Uh, social media, every everywhere, Ralphie Boy. It's R-A-L-P-H-E-E-B-O-I. Twitter, Instagram. I guess you can find me on Facebook, but if you can find me, we can link, I guess. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Could you be mine? Would you be mine? <sighs> oh, hello. Welcome to another installment of the KMAC Poetry Series. Hi. I hope you all have been okay uh, during this whole pandemic and are being creative and productive or not being creative and not being productive, enjoying the time from the hustle and bustle that, that this break that we get. Um, Self-care, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentle thems. I like that one. Ladies and gentle thems, welcome to the KMAC Poetry Series. Um, today, you all, I am so excited. We will be featuring an awesome published author now, um, poet by the name of Raphael Jenkins. All right, Raphael Jenkins, and we'll get to him um, in a moment. We'll also be creating our participating in a cool writing workshop that will allow us uh, to really flush out our poetry. If you are a poet or if you're not a poet but you just feel like you need to get all that pent up uh, stress out of you, writing is the number one way to get there and we're going to have a cool workshop to show you how to write um, certain poems. Cool? Yeah? Here? Are you here for that? 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 You can't see me anymore. Are you here for that? Okay. Good. So now that you're here for that, um, we will be getting to our, look, you can't see my board anymore. We will be getting to our workshop here um, soon. But in the meantime, in between time, let's check out Raphael Jenkins. Name of this uh, first piece is Ode to Detroit, hometown. I could have called this Ode to Home or Ode to Motown, but both have a warmth in their belly I ain't never held before. Besides, this ain't no Ode to my mama's house or Barry Gordy anyway. This is to the city what scarred my face enough to be pretty in an ugly world. A city where each homicide over the last 40 years played out to the tune of a classic R&B cut, cause we prefer our murders with beats you can bop to. A city where one night, that same summer, the homie got all six foot five inches of bark stumped out his face walking home alone from a school dance, I wandered the hood trying to find myself, landing on the corner of where you from and who you with, alone, unsure of any acceptable answers, considering running, though, the certainty of two truths. One, the rhythmic thump thump of feet flying through the hood smells the same as blood in the water. Two, the sharks on these corners always got room in their stomachs for whatever you value less than your life that day. I thank God my low hanging head in modestly priced apparel cloaked me invisible as stories of boys wearing J's and buffs nearly always end in a list of bullet points or shrapnels of teeth or a fresh limp, none of which my mama could afford even with the discount she received for housekeeping at the hospital and the pay from her side hustles and the manna she kept tucked under her tongue. Maybe I should consider the possibility none of this was an accident. What if mama in her owlish wisdom 
knew the jilted blocks her son wandered to smother the whispers in him and find a smile he could steal for himself to wear. Maybe she knew if he happened upon one, he'd make it home alive if he wore humility instead of fly. And so maybe this title ought be owed to the empty pockets what made my mama broke enough to keep her son alive in a city that will kill you for your retros and for your smile. Oof, 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 oof. Ralphie Boy, that was a good poem, sir. That was an awesome poem. Um, and hopefully we can get you guys to that level where you're writing some awesome poetry as well. And I want you guys to remember, um, a good poem is a poem that you write, plain and simple. It's, there's nothing, there's nothing, you know, detailed about it. Poetry is very subjective. I like to remind folks about that. Um, and when we're listening to poetry or when we're writing poetry, um, the goal is to listen or write for our ear and not the ear of others. Um, this is an expression that's purely based on what you like, what you need, and what you want. One moment. So, for this episode of the K-Mac Poetry Series, we're going to learn about how to write an extended metaphor. All right? How to write an extended metaphor. So a little brush up, all right? Metaphors are um, when we make a comparison without using like or as. Um, for example, I am the sun, hot and burning bright, right? I made a comparison to myself being the sun, and I didn't use like or as. Um, similes often get confused with metaphors um, because of the like or the as. Um, but it's a good way to discern between the two um, by finding that like or that as. So, um, a metaphor, an extended metaphor, is when we have one theme or one image that is going throughout the poem being compared to another thing. Extended metaphors are, are a great way to properly mesh something together, right? Taking two different images and putting them together so that you create one streamlined image um, that has a duality to it. So with extended metaphor, um, on your paper, hopefully you all have your papers out. I'm get my Bob Ross on. On your paper, I want you to write a T chart. Okay, I'm going to write a T-chart, just like that. And on each side, we're going to write our own images. You can fill your images in with whatever you'd like. One image that we had, it was about a computer document, right? The other side, we had a relationship. To use a different color. I'm going to write those out and let's hear another poem from Ralph. Yeah? Yeah, let's hear another poem from Ralphie Boy. For the well actually crowd, you know who you are. I pause my shrunken concerts jamming, hoping some bigger fanfare would pierce my living room window. But there was only the sight of birds and their myriad chirps. These days, a poem in my mouth is mostly an excuse to detail all I'm considering God might be. And today, it's air, warmed by the big brass section blowing its jazz from cloudless blue lips which I only notice because the dew has broken free of its brittle stasis, becoming a thousand rivers falling, their sheen singing background for the spitting horns, and 13 birds pecking my lawn, most of whom are some mix of raw sienna, brown, and gray, which makes me think of how often God uses color, creating the most beautiful things. And so maybe this is a poem less about God 
and more about how being black is being each of God's best ideas mixed into skin humming every pitch and you might be sitting there with a scientifically sound distinction between melanin and pigments and I will take them. Wondering if you put this much sweat into crushing all man mantras for self-worth or just ours. But I will not ask this of you, dear reader, because I'd be committing the crime I accuse you of. I know the pedestal cradling your supremacy only rests as high as our hands push it, and isn't it sad how even beginning a poem with a miracle I spotted outside my home can evolve into a black person smoothing a tension they didn't ruffle? Even birds, God, and music can't cool the pressure this skin imposes, which is enough to bring the most woke to their knees until one remembers the strength diamonds earn from the hell of their creation. And once noting our crystalline similarities, pushing against the knee, crushing our necks until its owner is flipped onto his back and bearing his belly, which would be all too easy to split into a crimson maw. But again, that would paint us the monster in your revisionist history. And so we rise, leaving the swine to whine its cowering, while we march a cadence timed with the trumpet solo glittering our coils. And just like that, dear reader, we are back to discussing the beautiful things. Don't you hear it? The wind crashing like cymbals in a speakeasy, and trees snapping their fingers between the cigarette drags. And isn't this more refreshing than a script of our sins and traumas? More alive than me dancing a jig on a salted floor for a hand clap and a tumbler of your tears? Wow. So, as you all can see, I've written out the different things that relate to each image that I was trying to portray in my extended metaphor, right? On one image, we have that computer doc, right? The computer document. And then the other Im image was a relationship. I should put failed <laughs> at the top of that. Failed relationship, right? And when we think of these two things, what are some things that come to mind, right? So for me, it was about the unspoken words, right? We're writing, font size, uh, the different options, bold, underline, highlight, uh, different font types, right? Uh, Times New Romans, dingbat, red lines for those errors or misspelled words, um, document, delete, shares, reading, and book, right? All these things are synonymous with a computer document. And for a failed relationship, I had failed expectations, sitting in silence, body language, disappointments, arguments, not listening, losing interest, no empathy, lies, and then the ultimate breakup. I think we all can agree that these are different details that make up the images of both of these. On your paper, I want you to select two images, all right? And put them in your T-chart, and then write details that go with each, all right? After you've done that, uh, we're going to take the sentences, or excuse me, we're going to take each detail that you've given and try to add sentences to create a brand new poem, all right? So, um, let's go ahead and do that, right? Let, uh, how about you try uh, and see what you can come up with after creating sentences using two, right? In each sentence, use two of your details going down, okay? Let's see what you got. In the meantime, let's hear another poem from Ralphie Boy. We got to hear it. Oh, it was so good. He's so good. I was wanting to read this, but I'm like, I'm not going to be extra Detroit, but I am going to be extra Detroit because it was asked for. <laughs> another ode to Detroit. Praise the sky graying this city and the seagulls too dumb to leave before winter. Praise the potholes and the cracked rims they birth and the cluck who haunted the bus stop at Larned in Congress, shirtless, no matter the weather. Definitely praise to that man too. Praise the trap and the hedge of protection when we visit. Praise every summer night and every blunt matched in a mama's basement. Praise the cushion pearl game. 
praise the aunties and the dirty rice, the bacon fat in the popcorn, the Lowry's too. Praise the chili cheese fries when I'm hooch twined and the green lights leading me safely homed. And to every shorty seeking a way out without their mama weeping in her high church black and veil. And to those already a sweet memory on someone's tongue. Praise, praise, and praises to this palace we've built. All wrought iron and sandwich bags, all dirt floor and plastic ficus. Praise our fingerprints holding it all together. Praise the sirens still wailing, the clinging. Praise the fighters, the fists, and the river as she keeps trying to clean us, as she keeps on failing. Praise her determination, her foresight. Praise the breeze in every hood. Praise each telephone wire, each spring rain. Praise every early snowfall and snowball fight leading to hands being thrown. Praises to the city my young won't suffer through. And to those lips, I'd kiss now if I could. The last time that tune wet my tongue, I sang for years. I'm still singing. Read me. Words she doesn't speak cut deeper than any expectation that I failed to meet. We sit in silence like library attendants, reading body language written in 24-point font. Deep breaths in bold underline her feelings and highlight her disappointments. This morning, we had an argument in Times New Roman. Her spell checker is never laxed. She points out errors, placing jagged red lines under the fact that I don't listen well. I wish I could start a blank document, but this file contains our story. She doesn't look at me longer than three lines like a chapter she's losing interest in. Sometimes her body speaks dingbat. Other times my empathy loses its glasses, so questions eat away at my character like the delete button. Are you okay? How are you feeling? Are you mad at me? Questions buzz in her ear like gnats until they're zapped by I don't feel like talking right now. So we sit in pauses, uncomfortable in chairs built by pointless lies. My lack of a brain to mouth filter is bad for her back. And sometimes the hands meant for relief of stress are the cause of discomfort. All I want to do is get to the next chapter, but random conflicts make her question if she even wants to keep reading. She doesn't judge books by their cover. She's more prone to reading a line or two and if not hooked immediately, she finds something else to do. So far, the story's been a page turner, but reading makes her eyes grow weary. It feels good being read by someone who understands, but sometimes we're put down to be picked back up by another. Well, that is our show for this series. That is our show uh, for this episode. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you learned some cool things about writing poetry today. And I hope you also enjoy our feature poet, Raphael Jenkins. Um, until next time, you all, uh, remember that the point is not the points. The point is the poetry. That's right. Um, we'll see you guys soon. Much love. Spread love.